here. But you get a really imprisoned left brain person, they can't see the connections with anything. They're here. Boom, boom. I'll tell you a story. Sound like Max Bygraves. I'll tell you a story. Not many people reacted there. Who's Max Bygraves? Shows me bloody age. Yeah, he's just a bit older than me. Anyway, what, um, what happened was I was asked to speak at the Oxford Union, at Oxford University, right? Now, there are whole brain people at Oxford University. I'm not knocking it, but because of the nature of it, there's a hell of a lot of real left brain people at Oxford University. And I had this bizarre situation. When I, when I do something like this to open-minded people, I just give it, ah, there you go, there, there, there it is, make of it what you will. But when you're talking to a real left brain audience, even at the elite Oxford University, where they pass all these exams to get there, he's clever, I'm sitting um, in a hotel room before I'm going to do it, and I'm thinking, how do I put this in baby steps so they'll get it? Why? Because the left brain is what I was talking to there. And it doesn't get this wider picture. I'll come more to that in a second. Now, I want to give you an idea of this left brain thing. If you go to my website, davidike.com, and you go into the What is Reality Research Archive, you can see this 20-minute clip of this lady. Um, it was sent to me a few um, weeks ago, and it was like a eureka moment um, because of um, what she experienced. This is a lady called Jill Balty taylor who's a, um, a neuroanatomist, brain scientist for short, and um, she had a stroke which shut down her left brain and instead of conking out, she spent hours experiencing what was happening while it was going on. And she talked about the fact that um, she got up, she, had, she was having this stroke, she didn't realise it immediately, and um, she got onto the exercise machine. This is how she describes what happened. So I got up and I jumped onto my exercise machine and I'm uh, jamming away on this thing and I'm realising that my hands look like primitive claws grasping onto the bar. I thought, that's very peculiar. And I looked down at my body and I thought, whoa, I'm a weird looking thing. And it was as though my consciousness had shifted away from my normal perception of reality where I'm the person on the machine having the experience, to some esoteric space where I'm witnessing myself having this experience. I look down at my arm and I realise that I can no longer define the boundaries of my body. I can't define where I begin and where I end because the atoms and the molecules of my arm blended with the atoms and molecules of the wall. And all I could detect was energy, energy. And I'm asking myself, What's wrong with me? What's going on? And in that moment, my brain chatter, my left hemisphere brain chatter, went totally silent. Just like someone took a remote control and pushed the mute button, and total silence. And at first I was shocked to find myself inside a silent mind, but then I was immediately captivated by the magnificence of the energy around me. And because I could no longer identify the boundaries of my body, I felt enormous and expansive. I felt at one with all the energy that was and it was beautiful there. Then all of a sudden my left hemisphere comes back online and says to me, hey, we've got a problem, we've got a problem, we've got to get some help. So it's like, okay, okay, I've got a problem. But then I immediately drifted back out into the consciousness and I affectionately uh, referred to this space as La La Land. But it was beautiful there. Imagine what it would be like to be totally disconnected from your brain chatter that connects you to the external world. So I'm here in this space and any stress related to my job, it was gone. Again, stress, body consciousness. And I felt lighter in my body. And I imagine all of the relationships in the external world and the many stresses related to any of those, they were gone. I felt a sense of peacefulness. And imagine what it would be like to lose 37 years of emotional baggage. I felt euphoria. Euphoria was beautiful. And then my left hemisphere comes back online and it says, hey, you've got to pay attention, you've got to get help. And I'm thinking, I've got to get help, I've got to focus. So I've got to get help. I've got to call work. I couldn't remember the number at work, so I remembered in my office I had a business card with my number on it. So I go to my business room, I pull out a three-inch stack of business cards. And I'm looking at the card on top, and even though I could see clearly in my mind's eye what my business card looked like, I couldn't tell if it, this was my card or not, because all I could see was pixels. 
And the pixels of the words blended with the pixels of the background and the pixels of the symbols and I just couldn't tell. And I would wait uh, for what I call a wave of clarity and in that moment I would be able to reattach to normal reality and I could tell, that's not my card, that's not my card, that's not my card. It took me 45 minutes to get one inch inside of that stack of cards. In the meantime, for 45 minutes the hemorrhage is getting bigger in my left hemisphere. I do not understand numbers, I do not understand the telephone, but it's the only plan I have. So I take the phone pad and I put it right there, right here. I take the business card and I put it right here and I'm matching the shape of the squiggles on the card to the shape of the squiggles on the phone pad. Eventually the whole number gets dialed and I'm listening to the phone. And my colleague picks up the phone and he says to me, Woo! 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 And I think to myself, oh my gosh, he sounds like a golden retriever. And so I say to him, clearing my mind, I say to him, this is Jill, I need help. And what comes out of my voice is, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I sound like a golden retriever. So I couldn't know, I didn't know, that I couldn't speak or understand language until I tried. What's happening is the left brain, because of what's happening to it, has stopped decoding vibrational information into human language and vibrational information into this reality, therefore it sees pixels, which is the next level of reality to this one. When I awoke later that afternoon, I was shocked to discover that I was still alive. When I felt my spirit surrender, I said goodbye to my life and my mind was now suspended between two very opposite planes of reality. Because I could not identify the position of my body in space, I felt enormous and expansive like a genie just liberated from a bottle. What a wonderful expression of what, it's, what it is. And my spirit soared free like a great whale gliding through the sea of silent euphoria, nirvana. I found nirvana. I remember thinking there's no way I could ever be able to squeeze the enormousness of myself back inside this tiny little body. But I realised, but I'm still alive, I'm still alive, and I found nirvana. And if I found nirvana and I'm still alive, then everyone who is alive can find nirvana. And I picture a world filled with beautiful, peaceful, compassionate, loving people who knew that they could come to this space at any time. And that they could purposely choose to step to the right of their left hemispheres and find this peace. And then I realised what a tremendous gift this experience could be and what an insight this could be in how to live our lives. And it motivated my recovery. So who are we? We are the life force of the universe with manual dexterity and two cognitive minds. And we have the power to choose moment by moment who and how we want to be in this world right here and now. I can step into the consciousness of my right hemisphere uh, where I, uh, we are. I am the life force power of the universe and the life force power of the 50 trillion beautiful molecular genuses that make up my form. At one with all that is or I can choose to step into the consciousness of my left hemisphere where I become a single individual, a solid, separate from the flow, separate from you. I am Jill Bolte Taylor, intellectual neuroanatomist. These are the we inside of me. Which would you choose? Which, would, which do you choose and when? I believe that the more time we spend choosing to run the deeper inner peace circuitry in our right hemispheres, the more peace we will project into the world and the more peaceful our planet will be. And I thought that was an idea worth sharing. Quite bloody right. And that is someone experiencing what I'm saying here, that we are decoders of information and this is an illusion, it is a decoded uh, uh, holographic illusion. And this bridge, the corpus callosum, is a target for those that manipulate us big time. When we take uh, psychoactive drugs, I did it uh, twice, uh, about 2003, it's quite an experience, but I uh, don't feel the need to do it again. What is happening is it's affecting the way our brain, mind, bodies decode reality. And it is opening up a wider range of frequencies. And um, we, that's why we experience extraordinary things. How can this be? This is not real. No, it's not real here, but it is real. And other times um, you access frequencies that are so far out there, the left brain can't work it out. I call it bugger me time, you know. Bugger this, I can't work this out. And, and, and you, you get these kind of um, 
uh, amazing uh, concepts and, and energies and consciousness coming at you and the left brain's trying to work it out. Well, you've got, you've got, to, you've got to decode it into something, you know, and it's like, all right, it's a, it's a turquoise eagle eating a Big Mac. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. And then you go, hey man, I had a incredible trip last night. I, I saw this big uh, turquoise eagle, he was eating a Big Mac, you know. No, no, that was bugger me time. He couldn't work it out, mate, what was going on. And this is the target. The left brain. The soldiers on the door. This is a key to understanding this conspiracy. The whole of society is structured to turn people into left brain prisoners who experience reality through that version of perception. A partner's division. I am Charlie Smith. I must jump over everybody. To succeed, I must be a success. People must say you're successful. That's my identity. That's my sense of self. And so what they do, if you, I mean, look at the system. If you want to progress within the system, this left brain society we live in, then you have to be very, very good at passing exams. You go to school, you pass exams. And what are you doing in exams? You're taking information given to you, you're putting it in the left brain, you're holding it, you're regurgitating it out on an exam paper by telling the system what it's told you to believe. If you're very good at that, you go to university. If you're really good at that, you go to Oxford University or Cambridge or Yale or somewhere. Unless you've got a few quid, in which case you go anyway like George Bush. Anyway. And then you choose your speciality. If you're very, very good at university, it's passing exams, boom, 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 then you get great degrees and then you get your speciality and you go into uh, being a doctor or being a scientist and being a, uh, a, even a politician, all these people. And, all, and therefore, all these people that are in the positions of power within the institutions that control and dictate the reality and direction of society are all, by the time they get there, fully paid up prisoners of the left sodding brain. That's why scientists can't get it, most of the mainstream ones. Because they're so in here, how can they understand concepts of reality in here? They can't. That's rubbish. I can't see it, taste it, uh, hear it, or, or, or feel it, so it can't exist. But it does. No, it can't exist. And I'm a scientist. I'm clever. <laughs> and so, if you look at society, you'll see more as the months go on. Um, you are looking at a society designed to put pr the, 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 uh, the centuries across the entrance to that. So this doesn't talk to itself. And they don't become whole brain people. We become prisoners. And that prison is the prison of the left brain. That's what it is, essentially. René Descartes, the um, French uh, philosopher and mathematician, said this about uh, finding a way to express self-identity. I think, therefore, I am. I would take it a stage further and I would say at the body consciousness level, I compute, therefore, I am. What we've been subjected to is mass hypnosis. Mass hypnosis, just like the stage hypnotist and the stooges on the stage, where the hypnotist puts into the stooge a programmed version of reality, a belief in reality. And then what happens is that belief edits reality to fit the belief. So suddenly they see an elephant in the audience, there's no elephant in the audience but there is in their reality. They taste a potato and uh, taste a, eat a potato and taste an apple because although the uh, electrical signal of the taste of the potato has gone to the brain, the imposed belief, the program, recodes that um, signal into the taste of an apple. The person is tasting an apple while eating a potato. Because it's all... This is what MSG does in food. They call it a flavour enhancer. What is it? It tricks the brain to decode more taste than is actually in the food. That's what it is. Um, 